Welcome back from Module 3, Lesson 4, as we introduce the distributive property. This is a hugely important concept. The distributive property is something you're going to use a lot throughout your coming years in math. Big concept in, the, in algebra, something we use an awful lot. So, let's get started on it. We're taking a look at these two numbers that are 12 plus 8. And what they did is they took that 12 plus 8 and they put it on a grid where you can see they have a common factor. Oh, let me get my pen aligned to where it needs to be. Stand by. All right, so they've got a common factor of 4 that they pulled out of the eight, 12 and the 8. And then 4 times 3 right here, that gave them the 12. So they put colored in 12 of the squares gold. And then they had that as 4 squares high and 3 squares across. And then they also had the 8, which is 4 times 2. So they had 4 squares high and 2 squares across that they colored in blue. Now from there, we're going to take that information and we're going to turn it into some problems that we can work with. So if we come down just a little bit so we can see what we're doing here, that 12 ended up being a 4 times 3. And when you have a number, parenthesis number, that's a multiplication problem plus a four times two. And you see those two numbers once again up above the yellow and the blue square parts on the chart. You had a four times three grid and a four times two grid to put those together. We good so far? Okay, so from there, now we're gonna take and finish up using our distributive property here or rewriting using the distributive property where these two fours are going to come together to be that one four. And then this three, let's go ahead and change a color on this so we can easily keep track of what we're doing. This three is gonna come down right there. And this two is, whoops, I hate it when it does that, is gonna come down right there. So the way we would write that answer in the end, we change that 12 plus eight into four times the sum of three and two. So, and of course, the sum of three and two is gonna be what? Five, and four times five is gonna be what? 20. If we were to take and go back up here and count up all of these squares, I'd have 12 plus eight, which is 20 colored squares total. So that is an example on how you would use the distributive property here. Let's look at the next one. This time we're looking at 20 by 50. Now, the common factor I'm thinking I can pull out of those is going to be 5. And you can look right here where they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's take and put a big old 5 right here. 5 times what is 20? That's going to be 4. 5 times what is 15? That's going to be three. So now we're going to come down here. The number that goes in front of both of those is going to be the five. And then we're going to take five times what was 20? Four. And five times what was 15? Three. And then for the final answer on this, what are we going to end up doing? We are going to take and write it again. Let's go back to grab our purple for those two fives. Those two fives are going to come down here to just become five. And then from there, we're going to take that first four. It's going to go right here. And that three is going to go right there. So now you've got your problem written properly. We have four times I'm sorry, five times the sum of four and three. So what the point of all this is, is showing you how you can use the distributed property to factor out that 20 plus five and rewrite it a different way. Later on, we're going to do all kinds of magnificent things with this, where we're going to be distributing that five back through. We're going to add in variables, which are letters that represent numbers. All kinds of wicked things are going to come out of this, but not yet. Right now, we're just making sure you understand how the numbers work this way. Next, we're going to make this a little bit more work. This time, we have a six and a five. So I'm going to ask myself, what is a greatest common factor I can think of to pull out of a six and a five? And I'm thinking that that is going to be three. 
So I'm going to start putting my grids together. 3 times what is 6? That's going to be 2. So I'm going to create one grid here that is going to be 3 tall. Oops, that's a square. I need a rectangle. That is going to be 3 tall and 2 wide. Right there. And then I'm going to have the other one 3 times what is 15? That's going to be 5. So I'm going to put in another one that is 3 tall and 5 wide right there. Now it would be nice if it kept the lines in there, but unfortunately the software I'm using doesn't allow that to happen. But we could pause it and do that. Alright, so I went back and I recolored them a little bit and gridded them back out so you can see better how that was going to look. Now I'm going to write my numbers in here. So I've got a 3 tall. And how wide is that going to be? Well, that's going to be two units wide. So right here I'm going to put a three times two. And then I have a three tall. And how wide is this section going to be? That's going to be, oops, there I did it again, five wide. So I'm going to put a five right here. Last thing I need to do is use my distributive property where I'm going to take and do the two threes. are going to come, oops, need to change my color again, go back to blue. The two threes are going to come back to right here. And then from there, my 2 is going to come down to right here. And my 5 is going to come down, there it goes again, come down to right there. So I end up with 3 times the sum of 2 and 5 is equal to the sum of 6 and 15 here. Two different ways of writing the same sets of, sets of numbers using your distributive property. So what do you have ahead of you today? Well, we're going to take go to our page height. You've got one more set of problems to work on this page. And if I turn the page, you've got four more problems to work right there. So a total of five problems that you're going to finish in class or for homework. This is what you're going to turn in to me. This is what I'm going to be checking tonight. Make sure you give me good work to go with it. You might even want to go back to that previous problem we did over here and color it in a little bit better so that it looks a little bit cleaner and more like what they did. So to do that, I'm just going to use my highlighter and I'm going to do, I don't know, let's try a yellow section here. And my coloring isn't really pretty. And then let's do a green section right here. So that now everything's really nice, clean looking, kind of like what they did for us before. Make sure you get all your work done properly. Give me good supporting work, grids, everything that goes with it. I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.